Okay, welcome back to our discussion on related rates. Last time we looked at four types of related rate problems, and today we're going to look at the fifth and final type of related rate problems uh, we, that are called uh, trigonometric function types. And then after that we're going to look at some various ex examples. Alright, so in this one you have an aircraft that's flying at 300 miles per hour horizontally at a constant height of 4,000 feet, and it passes over an observation point P. Sometime later the angle of elevation to the plane is theta, and the question is find how fast theta is changing. That means find d theta dt when theta equals 30 degrees. So the picture looks kind of like this. The plane flies over this point P, and if x is the path of the plane, uh, what they're telling you is that dx dt equals 300. But you can see from the picture that this distance is also x, so you could think of it in terms of this triangle here, dx dt here is equal to 300. So you're given dx dt is 300 and you want to find d theta dt when theta equals 30 degrees. So you've got to find a function that relates theta and x. And it's kind of nice to use constant values. It makes your, your comp computations easier later. So what, what function relates theta, x, and 4,000? Why is the tangent, of course? Tangent of theta equals 4,000 over x. So what you're going to do is you're going to differentiate both sides with respect to t. Notice that um, 4,000 over x can be written as 4,000 x to the negative 1. Now, be, be careful here. When you differentiate tangent of theta with respect to t, you get secant squared theta, but don't forget to take the derivative of what's inside with respect to t. So you pick up a d theta dt by the chain rule. Same thing over here. You, uh, you, you get negative 4,000 x to the negative 2, but by the chain rule you get the derivative of what's inside with respect to t. So you pick up a dx dt. So all we have to do now is solve for d theta dt. We're going to divide both sides by secant squared. When you divide by secant squared, it's the same thing as multiplying by a cosine squared on the top, isn't it? So to finish this problem, we have to find x, and we have to find cosine of theta when theta equals 30 degrees. It, it turns out, if you recall, uh, back in section 3.3, .3, the derivatives of the trig functions are only valid when we have radian measure. So I think uh, it's very uh, it'd be safe if in every case always convert to radi radians. So let's call this pi over 6. So uh, how do you find x? Well, you know that the tangent of pi over 6 is 4,000 over x. The tangent of pi over 6, recall, is uh, 1 over square root of 3. So uh, when you cross multiply, you got x is 4,000 times the square root of 3. We also have to find the cosine squared of theta. Well, you know what the cosine of pi over 6 is. Cosine pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. So cosine squared of pi over 6 would then be um, 3 fourths. So when you plug all that good, good stuff in, you plug in 3 fourths for cosine theta squared, and you plug in um, 4,000 squared of 3 for x. When you multiply it out, and uh, I rounded my final answer, I simplified it and then I rounded it. I get negative 0.02 radians per hour. Does it make sense that um, that the d theta dt will be negative? Because if you look at this as the plane flies, isn't the angle of elevation getting getting smaller and smaller? Okay. Let's let's do some more here. So that that was a type that we call a uh, trigonometric function type. In this one, we have the height of a cylinder that's increasing at 4 centimeters per second while the radius is decreasing at 3 centimeters per second. Question is how fast is the volume changing when the height is 10 and the radius is 6 centimeters. So the picture looks kind of like this. And they're giving us a lot of stuff. They're giving us that the HDT is 4 centimeters per second, DRDT is negative 3 centimeters per second, and they want us to find DVDT when H is 10 and R is 6. What's the equation that relates all this stuff together? Why it's the volume of the cylinder. So this would be an example of a geometric formula type, wouldn't it? What do you do? You take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. We're going to use the chain rule here. But notice, folks, um, r and h are both functions of t. They're, r and h both change with respect to t. So you're going to have to use the product rule here when you differentiate the right side. Now the, the, the pi is going to factor out of the right side. And so when, when you differentiate r squared times h, it's the first times the derivative of the second, derivative of the second is dh dt, plus the derivative of r squared. Well, the derivative of r squared with respect to t is 2r times the derivative of what's inside, gives you dr dt, times the second. 
Now this looks like a hard problem, but actually they give you all the information you need to finish this problem. Uh, they give you R is 6, they give you DHDT is 4, they give you R is 6, they give you DRDT is negative 3, they give you H is 10, so all you have to do is plug everything in and simplify it. You get negative 216 pi cubic centimeters per second. So again, that was an example of a geometric formula type, was, wasn't it? Okay, let's do a couple more here. I think we've got some time. In this one, you have a beacon that uh, makes one revolution every 10 seconds and is located on a ship anchored four kilometers from a straight shoreline. The question is, how fast is the beam moving along the shoreline when it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the shoreline? So if, if you look at this picture here, if this is the beacon here, this beacon is on the ship, it's rot rotating here like, like this kind of. So um, as this beacon rot rotates, um, you see this distance x on the straight shoreline? The rate at which x is, cha is changing, x would, it would be in increasing the way I've drawn it. Uh, the rate at which x is increasing is precisely uh, the rate at which the beam is moving along the shoreline. So you can think of it as this, this, um, this triangle right here. Now theta would be this angle. d theta dt is given in revolutions per second. Now remember what I mentioned, we should always convert to radian measure because of the the, the dif differentiation formulas for the trig functions. How do you convert one revolution per 10 seconds to radians per second? Well, if you take one revolution per 10 seconds, aren't there two pi radians for every revolution? So the revolutions cancel here, good old unit conversion, and, you're, and you simplify this, you get pi over five radians per second. So that's what we're gonna call d theta dt. And they want us to find dx dt, when theta equals 45. Um, Actually, technically, it's when it's when this angle equals 45. But you understand, when this angle is 45, this angle will be 45 also. So, what's the relate? What's the function that relates x and theta? Why it looks like it's a trig function to me? It's going to be the tangent again. Tangent of theta equals x over four. Now, when you differentiate both sides with respect to t, don't forget you're going to use the chain rule here and the derivative of the left side becomes secant squared theta d theta dt derivative of the right side is one-fourth times dx dt. Now we're solving for dx dt so you multiply both, both sides by four. Now to finish this problem we have to plug in at that instant when, 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 when it has an angle of 45 degrees or pi over four with a shoreline that means this angle is pi over four, theta is pi over four. So you need to know what secant of pi over four is. That's not too bad. Secant of pi over four that's one over the cosine, right? So the co so it'd be two over square root of two, which is just square root of two. So you plug in square root of two for secant. So this this whole thing becomes a two when you square it, and your final answer is eight pi over five kilometers per second. So that would, again that would be an example of a trigonometric function problem. I think we've got time for one more here. Suppose we have a street light that's fifteen feet above the sidewalk, and you have a six foot man walks away from the light. So let's look at this picture here. This, this, this would be the street light right over here. And this, this, this is the man that's six feet tall. So if the man is walking away at a rate of five feet per second, let's let x be the distance from the man to the street light. So they're telling us that dx dt is five. And what, it, what the problem asks for here is how, how fast is the length of the shadow changing at the, uh, it doesn't say at what time, but, how, but they want us to find ds dt. They're giving us, they're giving us that um, dx dt is five and they want us to find ds dt. Well, finding the relationship between x and s seems kind of tricky. I don't see any obvious formula here. That is until you consider similar triangles, right? Similar triangles would say that s is to six. This, since this small triangle is similar to the big one, s is to six as this whole distance, s plus x is to this whole distance, 15. So if you cross multiply and combine like terms and maybe divide by three at the end, the relationship between x and s is just that 3s equals 2x. So there it is. That's, that's the equation that, that relates x and s. Differentiating with respect to t isn't too bad. On the left side you get 3ds dt and on the right side you get 2dx dt. Now remember we're trying to solve for ds dt so you divide by 3 and then you plug in for what dx dt is. Your final answer is 10 over 3rd feet per second. Okay, so there, there you go. We, we, we've, we've talked about all five types of trig, all, all, all five types of related rate problems. The Pythagorean theorem, geometric formula, similar triangle, point in a graph, and, and today we talked about the trigonometric function.
Okay, we'll see you in class.